friends, in this lecture what I will try to do basically is take the concept of shear force and bending moment diagram forward. In the previous lecture, we understood the concept of bending. A beam is some sort of a structural member that takes in the external loads effectively by bending, right? And there are, at every cross section of the beam, there are internal forces that are developed. And the most uh, essential three internal forces are the shear forces, the bending movement and the actual forces. Now, we consider the beam as actually rigid because the actual strains that are induced due to this actual stresses are negligibly small as compared to bending strains or shear strains. So, we for now would neglect the actual strains and consider that the beam is actually rigid. In this lecture, what I will try to do basically is uh, understand the whole concept of shear force and bending moment, right? And understand the sign convention that goes into defining this shear force and bending moment. Now, let us proceed. Uh, for example, I have this uh, beam that is loaded with force P with a distance A from this A point and B from this B point. Then essentially, if we solve the equilibrium uh, and if we solve the equilibrium equation and we consider that this beam is in equilibrium, of course, then RA is equal to PB by L and RB is equal to PA by L. Now what? Now to find the shear force and bending moment, we got to define at what cross section we are interested in finding the shear force and bending moment. Because the shear force and bending moment keeps on changing throughout with length. So essentially we got to define at what cross section we are interested to find the shear force or bending moment. And suppose that this distance is x from this A point. And I want to find the shear force and bending moment diagram at this cross section of the beam. So essentially if I draw this left portion of this beam as a free body diagram, it will look like some kind of a thing like this, wherein this is equal to PB by L, this is equal to X, and at this cross section, if we consider the left portion of the beam, this is the convention, if we consider the left portion of the beam, that is, if a section, if I, if, if I cut the cross section by a plane and we consider the left portion of the beam and not the right portion of the beam, then essentially the shear force Vx will be positive if, it's, if it is in a downward direction. That is, Vx is positive. That is, the downward direction is positive for shear force. And the anti-clockwise moment, that is, this direction is positive for the bending moment. Right. So what is essentially Vx? As we know that the shear force, if we consider the left portion of the beam, the downward direction of shear force is positive. Right. So essentially Vx is positive. Pb by L is definitely negative. So minus Pb by L. And this should be equal to zero. Because what are the shear force and bending moment? Essentially they are internal forces and they act at this cross section to keep this whole beam in equilibrium. So Vx is nothing but is equal to Pb by L. Right. And this is number one equation that I have. Now, what about the sign convention? If I take an element, suppose this is an element, suppose O. Right. If I take O and draw it here, then I will suppose that uh, this Vx will act on the right side of this element O. And this resultant force acting at, on this left portion of the beam will act here. Right. And I denote this as resultant and force uh, for, the, for the suffix. Right. So Rf Vx. Right. And this will have a tendency to rotate this element in a clockwise direction. So number one clockwise rotation. Number two, Vx is downward and if these two conditions are satisfied essentially, we say that the shear force is positive. Right. Now, just the reverse, if it happens, we will say that the shear force is negative. And another one more thing we should know, that it is the left portion of the beam. If you consider a section, if you consider the left portion of the beam, then this convention holds true. 
If we can't see the right portion of the beam, then we will essentially see it just gets reversed, right? Because that O, o point has to be balanced basically, right? And if we consider the right portion of the beam, then essentially this is equal to, suppose P A by L, this is equal to P. And as this O portion has to be balanced, so Vx will be acting in an upward direction and the bending moment will be acting in this direction, right? And essentially this we take, if we consider the right portion of the beam, we consider Vx if it acts in the upward direction as positive. Right, so if we consider the right portion of the beam and then what happens is that Vx is upward, this is downward, the resultant force is downward, Vx is upward, this two creates a clockwise couple and this convention is taken as positive. Now, if we, if we, if we again retract and look at the left portion of the beam, then if the element is acted by shear force in the upward direction, that is Vx will be negative, so it essentially means it will be in the upward direction and this Rf will act in the downward direction, that is like